Hey, beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Today I'm going to share how to surrender. So on Sunday, I released a video about God calling us to a season of surrender. But a viewer asked a question, what is surrender and how do you surrender? So today I'm going to answer the question, how to surrender. Many people may be wondering how to do that. How do we surrender? So I'm going to look at my um, free guide, five clarifying questions, and then I'm just going to read some things to you to explain how to surrender. First of all, Paul said, I die daily. <laughs> and so surrender is laying down something. And it's number three of the five L's to lay down. That's how I describe surrender. And so before I get into this, I'd like to ask you to like this video and thumbs it up. You can wait till the end if it has blessed you. Okay. So to lay something down before God is to surrender your hold on it and, to, and lay it at his feet. And to allow God to do whatever he wishes with it. And so in every season, there will be some things or something that God asks you to lay down to surrender to him. He may ask you to surrender, to lay something at his feet as an offering permanently, surrendering it for the sake, giving it up for the sake of knowing him. So then you lay down what you have and you know him more. And so when I think of surrender, I think of, when we think of letting something go, we drop it and we walk away from it and we don't hold it. A lot of people are talking about letting go of something. Letting go of it is I don't know whose hands it went into and I don't care. All I know is that I had to let it go. But when you surrender something, you with care, put it, put it into the father's hands. When God asks you to surrender something or to lay something down, sometimes it seems unfair and even a bit scary at first. But you can trust that anytime God asks you for something, it's you giving him something and presenting something to him out of trust and honor and obedience to him. It's because he has something better for you. But you can only experience the better, the best that God has, has when you are willing to let go of what you are holding on to. So again, it's letting go, but it's not letting go in a careless way or in a way that says, all I know is God told me to take my hands off of it and it's not my business what happens. But you're saying, Father, I present this to you as an offering. And um, like a sacrifice, it has cost me something. But it's not just an exchange. It's saying that even if you don't raise it up and even if you don't give me something in place, and even though I don't know what you have for me or why I'm giving this, with sacrifice, we're all, we're often giving something in place of something else. And we know what the cost is. I'm sacrificing this so I can have that. With surrender, you're saying, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I fully trust you to do whatever you want. And if you don't give it back to me, or you don't give it back to me like I thought, then I trust you that um, it wasn't your will. It is literally just giving it over to God. Now, the way to do that, that's what it is. But how do we do this? And what I find is repentance. Now, repentance means to change your mind, to go in a new direction, to think differently. Sometimes people think of repentance as asking God for forgiveness, of confessing what you've done. And that is one way. That's one part of repentance is to say, God, I, I confess my sins before you, or I confess the error of my ways or whatever it was that you are confessing. But the ultimate plan 
of God for repentance is to surrender your will and your way and your plan for his. And so that means that you were heading in this direction, but now God wants you to go in this direction. So you surrender your right to go that way, even if it's a good thing. If God says it's good, but it's not what he would have you to do. And oftentimes that's where the enemy traps us up. It's a good thing. God, why can't I, you know, do this? I've been there where I've had to surrender. Let me give you an example. And it's obedience and it's um, it's a changing my mind to line up with God's word and to trust him and, and to to. In, in an act of repentance and worship to trust him that even though this looks like a good way, even though everything looks like it's lining up from all aspects, when I pray, I don't have a green light. When I pray, God has said no. And so I surrender it to you. And even though my mind is going this way, I turn directions to follow you. I turn my mind from what my reasoning and human nature can come up with and how it keeps on telling me that's what the enemy does. He uses reason like, has God not said this? Or that, why wouldn't you do this? Because it makes sense. But then you come and say, I'm going to align with God. I'm going to surrender to this. I'm going to turn and go a different way in obedience because this is disobedience and it becomes willful disobedience when God explains to us what he wants us to do and we do not do it. And so my example is this. <laughs> I have so many examples, but I will use the example of when I wrote a book and it was called Prettiful. It was talking about being pretty and beautiful and how God calls us not to just be pretty on the outside, but to an incorruptible beauty that is internal. And so Prettiful, and I had wrote several um blog post and this was dating back probably 2016 and a lot of women on my blog and that at that time I used to blog all the time and life has changed and sometimes I blog but usually I'm on YouTube um and I send out like a letter once a month if that I need to get back to it but I digress okay so uh, people were emailing me and they were saying how good this was and how it resonated with them, resonated. I always say that wrong, resonated with them. And they were just so encouraged. And it was a series that I had done on this. And it was speaking from my heart about my own life and existence and, and, um, knowing that God calls us to be not just pretty, but to walk out the beauty of the Lord that he puts inside of each one of his daughters, that incorruptible beauty. And so I came up with this book and I was doing it and God asked for it and I didn't want to give it to him. And he asked me to surrender it to him. And I had written the book. I had had it edited. I had all these things and I just didn't have a good feeling. I, you know, I kept on struggling about it. Every time I brought it to God, every time something happened, I just started to feel queasy. And it was like the Holy Spirit was just directing me to say that I couldn't write this book. And he wouldn't tell me why, but I laid the book down. And I, in other words, I surrendered it to him one day at church and worship. He was just speaking to me. I had even shared the cover with people and had people low on it and Facebook and all these things. And I knew it would be a good book. It was a good, remember? And so I had done all of this and, and, but the Holy Spirit was asking me for it. And so in church, I said, Lord, I give it to you. And I gave up my right to talk about it, to bring it up. I didn't say anything on social media because the Lord, I knew that it, when, when God asked you to surrender something, you know, people would try and talk you back into it. So I gave up my right to talk about it, to do anything with it again, to leave everything undone. I just left everything like, I don't have an explanation. I'm not going to try and address this. It's just God has asked for it, and this is between me and him, and this is an offering, if you will. And I gave it up as much as I could in that moment. But then I went to a Christian bloggers conference in Dallas, Texas, that I used to attend every year before the um, COVID. <laughs> And I went there and I was in worship and a young woman was singing a song called Satisfy. And as I began to hear her sing this song, I began to hear the Lord ask for it. I hadn't given it all the way up. And she said that she started out 
before she sang, or yeah, before she sang, the speaker came and she said that she had started out doing something for God. And before she knew it, it was about building her platform. And he told her to build altars, not platforms. And in building her altar, altars for God's people to come, that it would increase her platform to be heard because God would draw people to her. And she had been guilty of starting out with this God thing, but then making it about her and making it about her fame and her platform and her popularity, popular. And um, all of these things and about her message, it became hers. And it was no longer about honoring God, even though it was a good thing. And I, in that moment, I said, oh God, I'm guilty. I took something that you had given me and to share, and it became a message that I wanted to uh, herald. I wanted to speak to other women because they were receiving it. But now you've asked for it, and I don't want to give it up because it's a good message and because the women are receiving it and all of this, and it could be big and, you know, all these things. And I, I completely surrendered in that moment because I had surrendered as much as I could. Um, but there were still trickles of it in my heart. Anybody ever been there? God, I'm working on it. It's levels. It's, you know, step by step. I've given up as much as I can, but there's still part of me that wants it. And, um, I, after she shared that message, I saw myself in her message. And then the young woman came and saying, satisfy that you satisfy God. And I said, God, you satisfy me. And here, is this book completely. I won't bring it up. I won't do anything with it. You have it. I surrender it completely to you. I will not bring it up. It is yours. I'm not sacrificing it to get something back from you. I'm not killing the lamb so that my sins are forgiven or so that I can live. I'm saying, God, this is yours. It is yours completely and totally. And then as my heart was 100% surrendered, this thing was 100% surrendered. Then the Lord began to speak to me about the book, A Call to God's Daughters. As soon as I said that, he gave me a message that was based on the same premise. And he said, I want you to call my daughters into my lab, my love, my acceptance, and my beauty. And he began to take me. I was reading a book about one of my favorite people in the Bible. If you watch me sometimes, uh, for any amount of time, you will know I love the book of Ruth and I love her story and Naomi's story. And she began to, he began to talk to me about Ruth and he began to have me talk about his love, his acceptance, and his beauty, and how it shapes our identities and the way we live our faith as his daughters through every season of our calling. We're called into relationship with him and new identity in Christ. And yes, to do good works, but also to live an abundant life. And this is what he called Ruth into out of her Moabitess identity, out of, um, worshiping other gods out of the same way he calls you and me into, and it was his love. It was his acceptance of her. And it was the beauty that he bestowed in her and on her that shaped her and brought her into destiny to be a part of God's plan and to fulfill her part in God's plan. And so he began to walk me through this. That very day, I began to hear things as soon as I surrendered. And I went up to my room that night and I began to write it. And this book just flowed. It wasn't me. And that's where I got the called conference from. That's where I got called for more from. And um, even, you know, now I wanted, and God is asking me to surrender those things and to go back to the heart of the message that he gave me for his daughters. And so, and so that is an example of surrender. It's giving something up. And I didn't know that he was going to give me something. I was not giving it up to get something back from God. I was giving it up because he asked for it and I wanted to please the father. And it was hurting his heart that I was continuing to hold on to it. It was a standstill because I heard the voice of the Lord and because I have a relationship with him of hearing him and hearing faith, that's where our intimacy starts with the Lord is that we hear his voice. He says, my sheep 
hear my voice. They listen to me. And so, and they, they hear and listen to my voice and they will not follow another voice. And so when I had this, um, when I heard the voice of the Lord, I couldn't get past it. It was like, you know, I'm praying. I'm even if I'm not praying about the book, I'm praying about something else. God is not letting go. He's not letting this thing up. I'm hearing it. I'm feeling queasy. I'm feeling like, okay, I have to address it. And so when I finally did and gave it completely to God, it was not about what he had promised me in its place. It was about complete surrender. And that's how I learned that when we surrender something to God and when he asks us for something, that it's because he has something better for us, even if we don't see it right away. I could talk about the time I wanted to go to get my second degree for information technology. And God asked me to surrender that to him and not to go. And he spoke to me loud and clear and I did not go. I ended up not going again. He told me, don't say anything, just zip. Just don't say anything to the friend who had redone the schedule for Phoenix University because she worked at the one I was going to go to, a good friend. And I just had to tell her I'm not going to go. And I couldn't say anything else. The Lord said, that's it. Don't explain it. And um, he spoke to me and said, what if I told you I didn't want you to go? Would you trust me and would you obey me? I was on a fast. I was in my car and I heard him almost like an audible. It was like an audible voice. And I cried because I had my life planned out. This was before the book. And um, so I obeyed him because I heard the voice of the Lord clearly. And it was two years from that time. No, no, no. Yeah, it was two years. That was probably 2000. Three, 2004, when he spoke that to me and I was working in information technology. I'm actually on um, in my room right now on break at a conference for the work that I do in uh, information technology. Um, and um, he spoke that to me. And then it would be 2006 when he told me that he wanted me to go to seminary school. Uh, after it, it took two years for him to speak again, but I trusted him in that time. Um, and even though I would have times when I say, when got when, what got what, but I occupied myself with what he told me to do until then. I occupied myself with, with what I knew to do, raising my children, going to church, just being and focusing on the life that he had given me and what he had given me to do, not knowing what he was going to replace that with, or even if he was going to replace it. And then I heard the voice of the Lord say, I want you to go to seminary. He told me what seminary to go to and all of that. And so then my life started to take a different direction. And I didn't even know why he wanted me to go to seminary because I didn't think that I had a call of God in my life. I was in, in, I was in information technology and I just wanted, you know, my marriage restored. I just wanted, I was just, just wanted the things that people want in life, you know, when they're going through things. So then he caused me to go to seminary and that was a sacrifice understand. So that was a sacrifice because I not only did I have to surrender, but I said, Lord, I'm going to do this because you've asked me to, and you have to be with me. And whatever you have planned for me, I will, I will do it, but I don't feel worthy. But if you go with me, then I will go. So it was kind of surrender and sacrifice to um, not do what I wanted to do after I had surrendered what I thought I was going to do in my plan to then come back and say, I'm sacrificing my time, my talent, my treasure, everything for the sake of the call of God, whatever that is, because I don't feel called, but because you have spoken to me clearly, then I'm going to do this. And so I hope that helps someone understand what surrender looks like in real life and how to do it. You give it to God and trust him completely 100% without any expectation of what he's going to do with it or if he's going to give it back to you or what you're going to get back out of it. 
but it's been my experience that he gives so much more than you surrender to him. That he's a giving, loving father and he always has something better for you when he asks you for something. God bless you until next time.